great. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Who loves well cooked chicken? A well, well cooked chicken. Even the mention of the word chicken, some of us are already salivating, eh? And I apologize. I know this is not the best way to start a service, because some of you will be hungry the whole, you know, one hour, or let me say the whole four hours I'll be standing here. We love well cooked chicken. You know, when you see it, when you see the, um, the those are chicken wings, and maybe some uh, chicken, uh, they are called chicken nuggets. There's, there's a message that is communicated, and you start feeling nice, uh, isn't it? You know, I always keep saying, imagine you're having dinner, and this kind of food is put on the table. You know even the smell, the sweet aroma of well-marinated chicken. The challenge is when you're asked to pray. I don't know about you, somehow there's saliva in your mouth when you're trying to say thank you God and you just can't pray nicely. And the rest of the people who are there on the table are not even listening to what you're saying. It's like, like, can you just say amen? We start working on. In fact, the biggest mistake when you're praying is you say, God, this is a wonderful opportunity. Let me share with you my quiet time for the last one week. Now you create enemies. We love well-cooked chicken. In life, anything that tempts us, temptation, anything that tempts us is always nice, good-looking, very attractive. You know, something that gives you a certain feel. You know, it looks innocent. We are never tempted by things that look bad. You are never tempted by anything that you detest. But you are always tempted by things that really look very nice. Like now this photo. How many have you had coming here to say, I, I feel like eating some cockroaches? <laughs> Even in China, I don't hear cockroaches. You know, no one is tempted to eat cockroaches, but you are tempted to eat something nice. Like now what we have right there. So what if I tell you that what you see here is not exactly as it looks? You know, you're all ready to jump in, eh? You know, because we love chicken. In fact, we used to get shocked anytime we'd be out of the country, and they tell you chicken is cheap there. It's cheaper than meat, beef. As you've grown up knowing chicken is mgenia mekuja. We've grown up knowing chicken is the delic you know, that special meal for the visitor. You know, we used to have, um, in, in our East Leadership Group, we used to have, we were divided. You know the kind of division that I think is acceptable in God's kingdom? We used to have a group of broilers and a group of chicken kienyeji. Sami, you are which group? You, you're one of them. Sami was broiler with me. I used to lead the broiler group. My wife and uh, other people, it was the staff and, and the deacons. I guess we, we used to do a lot of, we contribute. Then if you are 10 couples, would have 10, uh, would have, uh, yeah, would have five kienyeji and five broiler. There are those who preferred broiler, na kuna wala walikuwa nataka, kienyeji. And some of us, you know kienyeji, it depends also on the kienyeji. Hata we upendi kienyeji, nimesikia, ay! Kuna kienyeji, you are given uh, meat. The meat is not coming out of the bone. So you know those kienyeji? Kakuku kame kauka. Kakatinain, kakuku katinain. Kametoka kule kuna ito waje? Shima hoho. You know? Huisero. 
kakuku kalikuja kame unapewa una, in fact the meat is black it's not the natural white you know how people say eat white meat this one is not white it is black so we used to have that you know wakina magret nguku we used to have people would split because we, we would enjoy and people would look forward to those meetings where there would be chicken because we would love chicken but sometimes what you see is not what is there if you pick up maybe few uh, pieces this is what you get those are worms and i apologize if you are not, you don't like seeing such things those are worms though they look delicious eh <laughs> but they are worms but can you imagine if you know very well that if you pick the pieces of chicken that have attracted you what you find inside ah uh, maggots live worms will you eat that chicken but you see it attracted you because you did not know what is inside okay in genesis chapter 4 verse 7 it says see sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you the thing about sin is sin is operating 24 hours round the clock sin is not at the gate sin is not out there by the roadside it is right at the door and what sin is doing is looking for an opportunity looking for an opportunity to come in he desires to have you so before you jump in and start enjoying the chicken before you jump in and start eating whatever it is that is so tempting whatever temptation you have in life i want us to ask ourselves or not to ask but i want us to do one thing and this will be the theme for the month or the entire month of august before you jump or you give in to temptation what you need to do pause you pause pause before you give in to temptation so today i'm doing an introduction class uh this will be very familiar as we proceed in the in the month of august before you fall into temptation you need to pause before you eat the chicken, before you eat the forbidden fruit, you need to pause. So the question would be, why? Why? That's why we are doing this uh, series on pause. Why? Why do I need to pause? Why not give in? Why not give up? So today I'll give us the first reason. And the first reason is because there is always more at stake than what you think. There is always more at stake than what you think. So, let's turn our Bibles now to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. There is more at stake than what you think. In Matthew 4, verse 1, this will be our theme passage again, uh, the whole month of August. Jesus is tested in the wilderness. Verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit in the, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 7. 
Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Verse 8, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All these I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Uh, Jesus said to him, verse 10, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, uh, we want to come before you. You are our God. You are the reason why we are here today. You brought us together through the blood of Jesus. And as we come here to worship you, we pray that God will give us a wonderful service, not only today, but as we proceed, even in the month of August, every single Sunday, our hearts, our ability, will be strengthened to say no to sin as we pause every time we are tempted to fall into temptation. We beg God that you lead us, you will guide us, you will fill us up with your spirit, that we will be able to tap into your power so that, Father, we can always become victorious when the devil, who is always crouching at the door, is out there planning on how to devour us. Thank you for your love and care. We love you. We thank you. Praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So today we'll not go into details on uh, this particular passage, uh, Matthew 4, 1 to 3. But there are two things that I would, like us to, I would like to highlight in terms of the way Jesus was tempted. Number one, he was being tempted uh, first to meet a legitimate need in an in illegitimate way. To meet a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. Food is something we all desire to have. As I said, when you looked at the chicken up there, there was certain urge, desire. If you had an opportunity physically, you would eat. When you are hungry, what you need is food. So there was need for Jesus to definitely uh, want to eat. But as we will study later on, uh, it was in an illegitimate way. The second thing is Jesus was tempted to cut shortcut. Take shortcut. Jesus was tempted to try to do the right thing in the wrong way. You see, Satan offered him all the kingdom of the world. And we all know that Jesus was coming to give us, to bring the kingdom to us. But we all know the kingdom of God would not have been brought to us before Jesus went through the pain of the cross. Our Lord Jesus needed to go through the pain of the cross to die sinless and resurrect for him to have authority and be able to bring the kingdom to us. Matthew 28, a scripture we use quite often, says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That could not have been said before the cross. So if Jesus had given in right there prematurely, you and I would not be here. You and I would not be knowing each other. It was through the cross that salvation came to mankind. So why didn't Jesus take the shortcut? Because he knew there's always a lot more at stake than what we think. There's always more. What do you think was at stake when Jesus was tempted? You know, it wasn't just turn these stones or show us that you have the power and the ability to turn stones to bread. You know, you can, I will give you, you know, uh, you can show, because you see right there, there are many people who are still doubting Christ. So the devil was very smart in terms of, hey, you have an opportunity to prove to people, to show them that you have the power to turn stone into bread. It, was, it wasn't only that. It was a lot more. And we have to understand in order to fight temptation, we have to face the truth that there is always a lot more than what you and I think. Anytime we are faced with temptation, there's always a lot more. Go ask Adam and Eve. 
They'll tell you they only, we only thought it's an apple or whatever fruit it was. We only thought it was that. We didn't know it would be this deep. Go ask Moses with the anger outburst. King David, you know, lasting towards uh, Bathsheba. Solomon, there are numerous examples in the Bible that you can go through that will be great lessons for us to understand that sometimes how it looks is not always how it is. There's always a lot more. So, do you know what's at stake every time you are tempted? Every time we are tempted, three things are at stake. Every time we are tempted, three things are at stake. Point number one, your future is at stake when you are tempted. Your future is at stake when you are tempted. In James chapter one, uh, let's go to James chapter one. You know, the topic of sin is normally not a very comfortable topic. Eh? So I'll understand even if you don't even smile. <laughs> so James chapter 1 verse 13. It says, when tempted... No one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to what? Gives birth to death. You know, now, the process leading to sin is well explained in the book of James. It says we are dragged away by what? Our own desires. Not any other, not your husband's desire, not your children's desire, not your workmate's desire. No, we are dragged away by our own evil desires, then we are enticed. Then, the desire is conceived. And it gives birth to what? To sin. When sin is fully grown, it gives birth to? Which is, which is the guaranteed destination of sin? Is death. Isn't it? You know, it is very clear that uh, as Christians, brothers and sisters, we have full control of our destiny. You know, and you always say external factors or third party will not make you sin because you have control of your life. Even when you're struggling with issues of bitterness and forgiveness and a lot of all those things, we still have control of those things in our life. Isn't it? You and I hold our future at the palm of our hand. How many or let me say how many people in your life have you seen that have had rough um, lives mainly because they did not have control or ability to say pause I cannot do A, B, C, D. How my future turn out and how your future turn out will be determined by our ability to pose. This month of August, it's all about empowering you and I to be able to pose and ask ourselves some questions. Pose 
Don't rush. Pause. Because you see, the sin is not at the desire. There's a point there where you cross the line. As you kept saying, even with the issue of lust, we know where you cross the line. You cannot walk around on the streets blindfolded because you don't want to last. You understand what I'm saying? There's a line where we cross. And that is where we have to pause. And kisoili tunasema ujite mkutano. You ask yourself, this is my future. If I don't, if I give in to this, where will my future be? Probably in a year, two, three, four, five, even 20 years to come. If I don't pause and make the right decision. You know, for the young people who are here today, you have a whole future ahead of you. I know many of us desire to, 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 to be married or to get married, and you desire to have family. That's the desire of every single individual. We desire that. But remember, the decisions that you are, the temptations that are coming on your way today have a serious repercussion. They will determine how your future will be. You know, I was, I was uh, you know, nowadays, unfortunately, especially for the young girls who are here, some of our daughters who are here, we have to realize that the decision you make today will determine your future. You have a whole future ahead of us. You know, some people are already finishing their future. <laughs> we won't get into that today. But you have a whole future ahead of us or ahead of you. And the topic that I really wanted to discuss with the young girls is Whatever you choose in life has to factor in your future. Nowadays, we have a situation where most girls, as they think about their future, the motivating factor is money. Lazima awe na kakitu. Si umesikia hiyo? Lazima awe na kakitu. Kwani tutakula mapenzi? And, and the person who's saying that is probably 18, 19, 20 year old. How can you expect at your age that the person whom you want to build a relationship with now later after you finish college, which is still young, 22, 23, I think you, some of us see in those TV programs, at the, ah, if, if that person is not driving, atuezi kuwa, hakuna kuongea. You, you've seen some of those programs. There's one called Dead My Family. How many have watched Dead My Family? Spiritual people don't watch such programs. Eh? <laughs> now I do. Uh... So you see, the women, very young, they're expecting young men who are supposed to marry them to be already driving, to be already having owning their own house, the person who's driving and owning their own house for you, girl, Nimbaba. Isn't it? Nimbaba. Eh? Wababa wako hapa, eh? <laughs> Logically, how does a young man, unless you come from a well-off family where you inherited a lot of money, how at the age of 24, 25, 26, how do you have those things? Uh, unless you want some of those standards from the government. You know those standards, which you can't talk about from uh, the pulpit. Yeah. You build for, you have to look at the future. Ask yourself, how will this action impact my future? You know, and that's why I feel for the young men who are here. Some of them will be put under pressure because the young girls want men with money. And I can guarantee you, those men who have those money at that age, myself, I would have some question marks. I would like to know how. 
Men of your age don't necessarily need to have a car. They don't necessarily need to own a house. All you need is look at the future and the potential of the brother. That's what you are talking about. Some of us came from far. If our wives were looking for those things, we would not even be married. You know, things have changed in Africa, or let me say in Kenya. Nowadays you see people driving. Eh? But some of us, there would only be one or two cars in church. If you're only wanting to marry someone with a car or with a big job, then you would not have found any in church. You wouldn't. We got, in fact, owning a car was never even in our dreams. You remember? And I know times have changed. And I have no problem getting married to somebody with a car. And they are good ones. But all I'm saying is this. Let that not be the motivation. Look at the future. Some of us, our wives saw the future. And the future only. <laughs> the future and the future only. Beyond the future, there was nothing else as the Bible says. Jesus, his appearance, there was nothing to attract. There wasn't. Eh? Where were you hustler? But anaona potential kwa your hustle. Isn't it? And they fell in love. I remember once my wife and I we were going steady and we went to Limuru, no, Kiambu, to follow up with a sister who had not come to church. When we came uh, to town, because um, you know you have to go through town. I said bye bye how she went. She was living on the other side of town. Only to realize I did not have even fare. It was around uh, almost going to seven in the night. No, I started thinking, who do I know who's in town? And now people who are in town, they work. They've already gone home. I was so fortunate. There is a neighbor of ours who used to work at Green Corner. You remember Green Corner? As a waitress. She was my only hope. Because, you know, there are no mobile phones. Some of you would be wondering, see, you know it, Waje? I wish you were living those days. I wish you were living those days. There was nothing. So I had to go and beg the, that lady, Lydia, she was called Lydia, she was our neighbor. And she had, she had extra to give me to go home. I, was, I kept saying, what would I have done? Usha sikia ulilala kwa kituo chabasi. Ulilala kwa kituo chabasi. There was nothing you could have done. You know? And, we, and they still married us. Despite those many challenges, if we start those stories, we'll be here forever. They still married us, and here we are, and they don't regret that they married us. Amen, Sami? Yeah, they don't regret they married us. Okay? Wakina Newton, Wakina Omolo, Charles, you know, the, 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 the dinosaurs wako. Okay? So for the young girls, my, my thing is, get to know the person and value the person as is at that time and, and know that there's a future ahead. There's a future ahead. Look at the potential. Pray for God's guidance. Yes, if the person has a car, amen, and praise God for that. But don't make that as the motivating factor. Otherwise, you'll end up in the hands of the babas. We all know who babas are, eh? By definition, you know who they are. Anytime the guiding principle is your future. I see young people experimenting with drugs, and, we keep, uh, and, and you just see, you are, you are just telling them you are playing with fire. That sensation, that uh, ecstasy, the feeling you enjoy at that time, project and look at the future. And I'm telling you, there are many, many people who have not managed to control those drugs. There are many. There are many. I had somebody who, uh, who was working for me. You know, uh, Margaret Nguku is also a very good friend of that young man. 
He's controlled by drugs. He cannot survive without. If he does not take drugs in a day, he, he vomits and the side effects are too strong. He wants to stop. He's gone to rehab two or three times. And this young man, at some point, had an opportunity to pause and say no to temptation. Now he's at a point where parents are using money, a lot of money, to take him to rehab. I got him a job because the guy is a very good tailor. But he can't keep up. He calls me every day. But, I mean, he doesn't come, you know, and his drugs now had advanced to another level. We play with fire. You don't have to give in to what other young people are doing. Have the ability, have the courage, have the confidence of pausing, and you say no to temptation. You don't have to give in. Every temptation that you face is not a small decision. It's a big decision with huge consequences for your future and for my future. Your future, to some degree, is at stake every single time you are tempted. Point number two. Someone else's future is at stake when you are tempted. Someone else's future is at stake when you are tempted. Second Samuel 11. Are we together? Second Samuel 11. Verse 2. So somebody, someone else's future is at stake when you are tempted. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, this is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness. The, the, then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent one to David saying, I am pregnant. You know, as I said, David, this is the king was uh, walking around, saw this uh, from far, the, the, the woman bathing. And I believe that he had an opportunity to pause and tell himself, you know what? If I look further, if I continue in entertaining this, I'm going to hurt myself. My future will be hurt. And not just my future, but also the future of the significant others in my life. Many other people who are close to me, their future will be affected if I give in to the temptation to continue looking and looking and looking. The more he kept looking, the more he became weaker. The more you look, the more you draw closer to temptation, the more you give in. He had an opportunity at that early age, uh, stage to say no and to keep walking or go back. But he continued. You know, King David's uh, relationship with women uh, in the Bible is quite interesting. Uh, in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 3, you know, in a few sentences, it lists all the women. Uh, uh, it lists the descendants of King David and uh, from his, you know, 11 children by seven wives. First Samuel shares the, 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 the other wife. There are eight. But I believe those are the ones recorded in the scriptures. His son, called who? Solomon. Had how many wives? 300. Concubines? 700. Eh, these things are hard to understand. Eh? 300 wives. We una wako moja na unalia. 
Anyway, so you can see David's sin was amplified in his children. Not to mention the painful, painful loss of uh, the baby they got with uh, Bathsheba. From what happened, they got a baby who died after seven days. And it was such a painful ordeal, experience uh, for David. Somebody else died, Uriah the Hittite, the husband of Bathsheba. Other people are being affected because of your sin. Other people are getting affected because you fail to give in to, tempt to temptation, to pause and say, no, I am not going to look at this anymore because I know myself. If I keep checking, I'll get to a point where a point of no return. You never want to get to a point of no return. So what you do, you pause before you fall into temptation. Everybody in your influence has the potential to suffer when you are unable to successfully pause and say no to temptation. We've seen hundreds of workers who've been laid off. The company has been shut down because somebody at the top was so greedy that he squandered the money, either he got into corruption because he needed more money, and the company has to close down. How many people, hundreds of people, who are innocent, who are just working, they come to work, they have their own dependence. You are the sole breadwinner, but no, you are no longer a breadwinner, you no longer have a job, because somebody else, out of greed, could not pause and say no to temptation. Have you heard of such cases? You've heard of such cases. How many of us here today grew up in broken families because either your father or your mother failed to pause? Do we have them here? In a group this big, I know we are many of us, your father gave in to temptation. Your mother gave in to temptation. Some of us, our dreams were never accomplished because you are very smart. You probably even passed exams. You remember our time, we did not have a lot of uh, these uh, bursaries and people offering to pay for school fees. But you never advanced your education because someone, one of the parents, messed up. Not because you failed to study but because you are dependent on somebody else who had no ability to pause and say no, you are forced to have your life where you had not intended to have it. Women. You know, yesterday we had a, a said thing, we had a rehearsals for a, for Pam and Casper's uh, wedding this coming Saturday. So we were here having the rehearsals. So, so I said women on this side. And then I was told, we are, it's not women, it's ladies. <laughs> now henceforth, I started saying ladies. So I've just said women I remembered yesterday. But women, some of us have a certain strong desire a strong desire of uh, borrowing. I'm giving examples that I know of. Not, not here, but I know that are very common. We borrow a lot of money. Our, our husbands are not aware. Umeomba from one chama to another. Una, una, una horania. <laughs> <laughs> Na, na, na ingine, unachukua hii, unaeka hivi, you know, unacheza, yani you are always perpetually, perpetually you are in debt. But the thing is, your husband is not aware. What you are doing, you are sinking your family deeper and deeper into debt. Because either you are trying to, to, to keep up with a certain lifestyle, now when all Hell will explode. It will be 
irredeemable. It will be so serious that now probably the auctioneers are at the door. That's where now your partner is getting to know that, hey, wh what's going on? Oh, you know, I have loans that I cannot service. We've had cases like that. And we always say, women, and now even men, this relates to both, when you're in a position where you're feeling like there's an urge to borrow, and borrow, even men are in the same situation, by the way, and borrow, always pause and ask yourself, do I have, do I have the ability to pay back? Do I have the ability to pay back? Or am I creating more issues in our, in, in not just in my life, but in our family? Don't live a lifestyle that you don't, uh, is not your standard. Don't. Don't elevate yourself to a lifestyle that is beyond you. Don't. People will suffer. Not just you, but people will suffer. I'm giving this an example because at a case, yes, not somebody in church, but even those things that are happening out there are also happening in God's kingdom. Isn't it? So you need to ask yourself today, number one, if you're in that position, either you're a man or a woman, you need to disclose and let your partner work through these things together. Finances is not easy. You have to work through your finances together. But the question is, are you in that position where you've, you've borrowed, you have loans and loans and loans, you are trying to handle them by yourself, but they are stealing your joy. It's a question of time, other people in your life will start suffering. Sisters, do we agree that this is something that needs to be dealt with? Men, brothers, I want to ask you a question. And it's not an easy question. Do you have another relationship outside your marriage? Unampango ya kando. In a group this big, I always say, I will not be, I'll be shocked. Kama akuna. Do you have a side chick? Whatever name you call me, stress, whatever else you call. Do we, do we need to be honest today? Mbona tunanyamaza kidogo? Or you want me to pause on that topic? <laughs> God is saving us from so much. As, as many of us here can come and testify, if we had an opportunity, a lot of marriages and family unity has been brought down because of infidelity ongoing relationships that your wife is not aware of. You've gotten involved. Either you started come am cheso. There's a point where you needed to pause. But you never paused. Ukaendelea. Now you have someone giving you a hard time. Usiku ukilala, unaogopa. Labda kataandika. Nata ujaka save kama anjeri ati otis the mechanic. <laughs> Even your wife is wondering otis the mechanic ameandika hi honey ha, have a good night. <laughs> Alashindwa eh hey, hii garage ina ina PR ingine ya juu sana. Eh? But, but, but on a serious note, do you have a side chick? Do you have outside relationship? And my question is, have you considered how many people will suffer as a result of that? Relationships grow. They are not static. They are not static. 
they grow. You cannot have a relationship with someone and expect at itakatu apo. In fact, some of those relationships you have with out there, their goal is for them to be known. So ni mchezo ya paka na panya. Wewe unajaribu kuficha ya nafikiria what is the best time when the wife is around ni mtumie message. Your life is so, um, it's, it's full of anxiety. Because you don't know what else will happen. Shida unajiongezea. There's a reason why a God requested us to be faithful. You know, you see, like Solomon having 300 wives, I don't think the, 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 those were relationships. How do you even have 300? God gives you one woman so that you can share your life with that woman. But I know some of us, we probably, you've gone, you've gone so deep, now you're wondering how do you get yourself out of the mess. My issue today will be wherever you are, yes, your wife is not aware. Wherever you are, this is the opportunity for you to come out. The issue is not whether you, you, you be, you, know, you are not like condemned now eternally. There is room to change. There is room to change. Amen? There is room to change. God always provides us with ways for us to change. Because yes, I know we face temptations left, right and center. At work, wherever we are. Some will stay, oh, because I, you know, which is another now, those are mari, uh, ma ma marital issues that should feature in our workshops. But whatever the reason you are trying to give for why you've strayed, deal with it. Because some people will suffer. People have suffered. They are living examples of people here who, because men or even women, in some cases they are women, isn't it? They could not control their sexual desires. You redirect your sexual desires to the right place. It will cost you. And not just you. Ati, oh, maisha ni yangu, we shugulika na yako. Hakuna kitu kama iyo. Your sin will affect the future of those who have significant people in your life. You know, there are some things that sometimes I wonder, do I share in, here or not? Sometimes if I'm off, you, you help me. Somebody shared, a lady was sharing about the father died. The father died. And she shared the cause. The father was found in a lodging with a very young girl. You know what killed the father? Viagra. So, this girl and the family will live the rest of their lives having to live with that reason. How do we even stand and say this is what happened? When that man was going to buy whatever he was buying, when that man was going with the lady to the lodging, was he thinking about his family? No, he was thinking about himself. There is nothing like this is me. You are not an island. We are all part of a continent. We are together. Your sin affects your children. Your sin affects your wife. Your sin affects your husband. Your sin affects your grandmother. Your sin affects your neighbor. Your sin affects your workers. Your sin affects everybody in your life. It is not just you. It is not just you. What are you going to do to stop? For some of us, we are that early stage as we speak. And thank God we are speaking it at this point. What are you going to do to make sure that you don't get to that point? Remember, feelings are strong. Don't decide, let me just see how, how much I can flirt with her. How much we can touch. How much we can do this without necessarily going so far. There is nothing like that. Feelings are feelings. You entertain them, they grow. That's how it is. They are not static. You entertain, they grow. You have to figure out. You know, we know ourselves. I know myself. You know yourself. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm uh, the most pure brother here. Far be it. I am not. Okay? 
But one thing that I've done is my phone is synchronized with my wife's. So if you call me, she'll know. If you send me a message, she'll know. She has the password. My kids have password. Ile nilikuwa na free tu kuficha sometimes ni Mpesa kwa sababu watoto wana. Mkikuyu una pesa. Labda ya Mpesa. Okay? But my phone is always, they will play with it. My wife will go with it. You know, there's a time, uh, last year, uh, I think November, I traveled out of the country. And I left everything now with, with uh, my wife. So later on, I was talking to my neighbors. Because one of them had tried to call and my wife picked the phone. And I said, I told them, you know, now everything. I said, Maya, you let your wife have your phone. Because Maya, are you sure? <laughs> there were three of them. Are you sure? When you don't have secrets. I said, I mean, what secrets? You live better when she has, she knows everything. So see, we may leave, we Because you are thinking, man, ninja ki ame piga. Even my kids, they, so she's always with the phone. In the car, she will take it. She will say, I need to WhatsApp somebody. She'll go. She'll do everything. Okay, I mean, I, I know she knows the password and everything. That protects me. Maybe if that was not the case, I would not be here saying what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what can we do? I don't, I'm not saying that uh, now, kill to our evil. Please. Otherwise, I'll be in bad books with some brothers here. But my question is, as a brother, would you be comfortable leaving your wife with your phone for two days? Is it possible? I'm at a wife. What are you to say me at a woman? Are you, would you be comfortable doing that? Oh, you see this resounding yes. Many mauliza ni wakangalia chini. Every temptation you and I face, regardless of how big or small, to some degree, has the future of those in your closest influence. Now, but it's not just about you and the people whom you love. There's a third one, and this is the final one. Your faith is at stake when you are tempted. Your faith is at stake when you are tempted. First Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, I'll move very fast on this one. First Corinthians 10. Uh, verse 13. It says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That's what the scripture says. Okay? So we can never say that the, the temptation is, has overpowered me. There is nothing else I would have done. Every temptation you give into is because we failed, not because it's too, it's too strong for us. Every time you give in to temptation, every time you sin, your faith as a Christian is at stake. I know that sometimes you don't like calling sin, sin. We like saying it's a mistake. But sin is sin, isn't it? Sin is sin. You know, I love maths, mathematics. How many of us love mathematics? Okay. Yeah, those are Christians. The ones who can tell you me I don't like mathematics. You know, uh, you know, 10 plus 10 is equals to 30. Huh? Professor Mumbo, is, am I right? I'm not. 10 plus 10 is equals to 30. It is not. Are you sure? What is it? 
Oh, it's 20. I'm sorry I've sinned. <laughs> Have I sinned? No, I've made a mistake. 10 plus 10 is not 30, it's 20. That we call what? A mistake. Sami, I slept with my neighbor. I made a mistake. Is that a mistake? That is a sin. So we have to call what is need, you know, give it the right name so that you can see the seriousness of it. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. There is a big difference between mistake and sin. If you look lustfully at a woman, you are sinning. If you steal from your neighbor or in class in college, you are sinning. If you get involved, you know, in those uh, angry, uh, what do you call it? Alterations, eh? You are sinning. If you fight, whatever you are doing, you are sinning. Mistake is different. Mistake is different. Every time you and I sin, every time we give in to our feelings, every time we give in to our laziness, every time we give in to impurities, insecurity, whatever it is, another brick of our spiritual wall is added. The brick between us and God. You know Isaiah 59? The brick that separates us from God, another brick is added, another brick is added, another brick is added. And that is why what's at stake is your confidence in God, your faith in him. Because sin breaks confidence with God. We have people who have difficulty praying because you cannot pray, you know what you are struggling with. The sins in your life have brought you so low that you have no audacity to stand or to kneel before God and say, Father, as your son, you cannot because you've given in to temptation. You fail to pause and it is affecting your faith. I mean, I remember Evangelist Mike and I mean, uh, Sami and others have been here to encourage us to share our faith. How do you share your faith when you yourself are bogged down by sin? It has clouded your mind and everything. How do you even start telling people, let's go to church? You cannot. You have no energy. You have no courage. Because you know where you are. Because when you fail to pause, your faith is affected. Is affected. Sin will break my sense of God's existence. The promise of God. Sin breaks contact with God. Every time you are uh, tempted to sin, you know what's at stake. Our confidence in God. Our confidence in God's love for us. Our confidence, confidence in God's care for us. Our confidence in God's presence in our life. It is just a couple of times giving into the same sin then you start hearing people saying, I don't even believe in these things. You let it grow. You let it cloud your mind. You let it compromise your conviction. Because it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds. I don't know if I believe these things anymore. Even this issue of church. That's where you start having serious struggles. Many people, many, many people, the reason why they no longer come to church, many of them, I'm not saying all of them, but many of them, is because they could not pause and say no. They could not pause. Some serious, serious, uh, so to say, role models in God's kingdom. They just chip, 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 slowly, slowly, slowly. They're all the way down. All the way down. Oh, you know, I'm not the only one. We are many in church struggling with this sin. It's like when you stand before God, God will ask you, Ebukam, in, in, your, in, your, in your Nazra Bible talk or Kayole or Komorox, how many are struggling with it so that I can decide how to punish you? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Ah, at you are many God. Only one of us was okay. So excuse us. 
It doesn't work that way. Sin is sin. Amen? So in conclusion, at the heart of every temptation is the question, can God be trusted? Can God be trusted in the heart of every temptation? And every time I say yes to temptation, I'm actually saying, making a statement, no, he cannot be trusted. Church, when tempted, you must pause and say, temptation, you will not have my future. Temptation, you will not have my family. Temptation, you will not have my faith. There is too much at stake. Too much. As I said, if you are really young, you have a lot of future ahead of you. If you are really old, you have a lot of legacy ahead of you. If you are in between, you have a lot of future and a lot of legacy ahead of you. And that's why I want you to join me right now as you all say this. Are you ready? Temptation. You are not going to steal my future. Temptation. You are not going to steal my family. And finally, temptation. You are not going to steal my faith. And to God be the glory. Amen.